You got me straight tripping, boo. Well, this is the easy one of the group, isn't it? Couldn't write it down fast enough. Wow, good going on that one. I'd like to dip you in cheese whiz and spread you all over a Ritz cracker, if I'm not being too subtle. Uh, that is uh, bringing down the house and uh, a really fun movie to do. I'd like to dip you in cheese whiz and spread you over a Ritz cracker from not being too subtle. That line was written, but you got me straight tripping, boo. You got me straight tripping, boo. I attribute that to Queen Latifah. I had other lines written for me. Just before I went on camera, I looked at the line and I said, mm, geez, I don't, know. I don't know about this line. I'm just trying to be kind of hip. And so I went to her and I said, what do you think? She said, well, I wouldn't say it. I said, well, what would you say? She said, well, you got me straight tripping, boo. Couldn't write it down fast enough. So every one of those lines that I had in the movie, she gave me those lines. That made it for me. <laughs> Commence to start. That would be Father of the Bride, part two. Commence to start. Commence to start. Steve Martin. We worked together for the first time on Father of the Bride Part 2. I was on Father of the Bride Part 1, but I didn't work with Steve. Cantare! Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. But it wasn't until Cheaper by the Dozen 2 that we really had a great time working together. I mean, there were a lot of laughs and just a great working experience. I never did it with baked goods, but you know your Uncle Mort, he pets the one-eyed snake five, six times a day. American Pie, of course. But you know your Uncle Mort, he pets the one-eyed snake five, six times a day. These were all improvised lines in American Pie. We had had a session a week before the shoot because I wasn't crazy about the lines that I had been given initially, so we came in and improvised, and then when I got to set, I was looking for the sides. You normally get some sides that have the lines on them for the day, and there weren't any sides. So they said, oh, we didn't have them. We thought you'd remember what you did last week. That was really a lot of fun doing that movie. I thought it was kind of raunchy when I read the script, but it turned out to be an unbelievable classic. Tweet us on Facebook. Uh, Shit's Creek. You glance down at your coaster, it says, tweet us on Facebook. Daniel came to me with the idea of working together on an idea that he had for a show, and I, and I jumped on it. I, I said, anything, sure. The idea of a wealthy family losing their money, that was basically the pitch. And then to watch him just take off artistically from that point on as a writer as an actor. I mean, it, it was crazy how fast that all came together. We didn't really peak until our very last season, and that's when the show really caught on with the audience. And wow, I mean, you know, we broke a lot of records at the Emmys. I mean, it was pretty amazing. No matter what we do from here on in with regard to Schitt's Creek, never say never. I think it has to start at a place that's as good or better than where we left off. Couldn't have ended any more perfectly. He was in the sardonically irreverent Dibbick Schmibbick, I said more ham. Uh, waiting for Guffman. That was really <laughs> an amazing little scene. My grandfather, he was in the, the very, the sardonically irreverent Dibbick Schmibbick, I said more ham. I kind of wrote the outline for that with Chris Guest but I didn't really know anything about how those things were done. I wasn't in Spinal Tap, so I didn't know how those improvisational movies were done. There's no rehearsing. You just go on camera and kind of do your thing. People ask me, you must have been the class clown. And I say, uh, no, I wasn't. This was part of, an, I, I think, a kind of an amazingly good little run I had on camera, talking about my background. Incidentally, the song Booby made a kishka 
came from that review? A lot of it was improvised and some stuff we had scripted, but one of the funniest movies. Had a great time doing that one. I can't dance, I've got two left feet. I was born with two left feet. Well, this is the easy one of the group, isn't it? Best in show. Uh, the role of uh, Jerry Fleck. I've got two left feet. I've got two left feet. <laughs> I, I thought he was kidding. But I wasn't. I first met Catherine O'Hara when I was in the Toronto production of Godspell. It's around 1972. Catherine's brother, Marcus, at the time was going out with Gilda Radner, who was in our company in Godspell. And I would see Catherine sometimes with her brother, although I didn't really know who she was, but that's when I first met her. When I got into Second City in Toronto, the Second City Theater, Catherine was working in the theater as a waitress and got to know her in the theater, in that kind of situation. And shortly after that, she kept auditioning for the show and she finally got in the show as Gilda's understudy when Gilda left to do National Lampoon, Catherine moved in and took over, and that's when we actually, you know, started a working relationship. I guess she brings out the best in me, whatever that is, because our working relationship is just so good. We're both not afraid of rehearsing before we go on and just have a lot of laughs off camera as well, which keeps everything in a very relaxed vein. No, I don't know the move. I wasn't a hormone-crazed Romeo when I was a kid. Wow. No, I don't know the move. I wasn't a hormone-crazed Romeo when I was a kid. Ooh. Wow. I don't know. Waiting for Guffman. No. Cheaper by the dozen, too. Well, there you go. Oh, was it the arm, the arm, the arm around the arm, the arm around the shoulder? That's what it was. Wow, good going on that one. No, I don't know the move, okay? I wasn't a hormone-crazed Romeo when I was a kid. I remember one scene where we were log rolling. We're actually on a log in the water. I think we had to be hanging on to something uh, that was not necessarily in the shot. It struck me so funny that both of us couldn't get our bearings on this thing, and I started laughing. And they were getting, you know, kind of getting angry because they wanted to get the shot in, and I couldn't stop laughing. Couldn't have asked for a better day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and then I got Steve laughing. And I don't know how they got the scene, but I don't think I ever got through the scene without laughing, so I don't know how they cut it. It really was a fun set. My mom's family, she she had nine, she was one of nine. Could I have had nine, twelve, twelve kids? No. No, no, no. No, that's just, that's, I would have gone nuts. I would have gone, yeah, they'd, they'd, they'd have to lock me away quick. Is it an erectile problem? Because sometimes you can buy a little time with a well-placed thumb. Would that be American Pie 2? Oh, American Reunion. Sometimes you can buy a little time with a well-placed thumb. Oh, God. We'll just tell your mother we ate it. Could be the line that I've heard more times than, than not. Well, we'll just tell your mother that uh... But uh, we ate it all. I can't tell you how many weddings I've been to where they kind of surprise me. They, they would, you know, bring out a, a, a pie to the table and you would kind of have to act surprised. Uh, but it happened quite a bit, actually. The Wagon Queen family truckster. You think you hate it now, but wait till you drive it. National Lampoon's vacation. And the Wagon Queen family truckster. You think you hate it now? But wait till you drive it. Harold Ramis worked with us on SCTV in the beginning, and we were good friends. And when he cast National Lampoon, he cast a bunch of us from Second City. So he got me for the salesman, because I guess he saw some kind of sleazy quality in me, and don't know what that means. But I do remember that was a really hot day in Glendale in August. 
I think it's those stories the old lady was telling you. The one about the three girls in the house. Cannibal girls. <laughs> the cut line on the poster was, these girls eat men. I think it's those stories the old lady was telling you. You know, the one about the three girls in the house? I went to school with Ivan Reitman. He ran the film club at McMaster University, and I joined the film club, and I met Ivan Reitman and Danny Goldberg. Both went long before their time, unfortunately. But we were good friends in school, and he gave me my first job in the business as a coffee boy on his first feature. And then, because he knew I did a lot of acting and thought I was funny in university doing all my stage work, he said, how would you like to be the lead in my next movie, Cannibal Girls? That was pretty exciting to me because when you're a coffee boy on the other side of the camera, you know, when they yell rap at the end of the day, you know, I would see all the actors just get in their car and go home. So I was excited because I figured as an actor, I'd be able to just go home when they, when they said that's a wrap. That's how little I knew. We now, on behalf of the Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, declare today, Eugene Levy Day in Hollywood! Getting a star on the Walk of Fame is something you don't even think about. It's not something that just comes up during the course of your life or career. Awards and trophies and everything else, it's, it's, it's all really nice when it happens. It's not what the work's about, but, you know, it's always nice when somebody recognizes what you're doing, likes it, and tells you. That's always nice, no matter what you're doing in life. But I go back to uh, watching TV when I was growing up, and this is back in the 1950s and, in, and into the 60s. And the biggest influence for me, I think, out of that thatch was probably Jack Benny, because I loved how he would get his laughs just reacting off other people in the scene. Don't you ride side saddle? <laughs> I think that there's one person I can attribute my own style to. It's probably Jack Benny. It's been a nice few years recently, you know? Good things have been happening to me. I should have started my career when I was 70. Now that I look back, things have been going very, very well. And the Hollywood star is just a nice icing on the cake here.